Hi everyone, I'm Max from Shino's Digital, your weekly digest of SEO tips and digital marketing hacks to make your business skyrocket in the coming months. So today I'm going to talk to you about five default WordPress settings or setups which can actually harm your SEO efforts or your SEO. So the setup number one is keeping default permalinks. So what I mean by this, when you start writing your fir first blog post, your URL will look something like this. And we already know, you know and I know, that having keywords in URLs is crucial to really rank high in Google search results pages. Why? Well, visitor or user of your site should really guess what the blog post or the page is about just by looking at the URL. So how to change that? Go to WordPress dashboard, then go to settings and then to permalinks. And I think I'll put the screenshot somewhere here probably. And you can see that the settings are chosen as default for this funny URL. Just choose different option. Choose maybe the category, category slash uh, post name or just post name as your URL and the page title or post title of your blog post will be inserted to the URL string and you have keywords in your URL. The setting number two are categories and tag, tags and actually having them disorganized. If you don't really think about them from the beginning, you're really harping, harming your SEO. So what is the difference between categories and tags? I think I talk about it. Uh, I think I talk about it in one of my previous videos. But just to give you a very very quick overview, categories are crucial to organize your content. Content, uh, content. tags um, are not obligatory, and you can use them as I usually compare them to hashtags. Um, or you know how you use on Instagram hashtags. This is actually how the tags would work on your website if you use them. So let's say you have a fashion blog and you write about skirts, shoes and bags. So I would set up the skirts, shoes and bags as your categories. And then every post I would tag by different things. So for example, winter wardrobe, summer wardrobe or by color maybe. So maybe this is about green palette or pink palette etc. If you are still not sure about categories and tags, go to shinosdigital.com slash blog and search for categories or tags within the blog and um, there is an ultimate guide to uh, categories and tags and how to use them. So I hope this blog will help you. The setting number three is using blog roll and actually using blog roll with too many links pointing to external resources. So what I'm trying to say here, every single link which points to your website from external resources is like a vote which, tell Google, which tells Google that your website is really worth to put higher in Google search results pages. If you do the same and link out to many, many external websites, you are sending your votes. There is, however, a certain amount of votes you can really give away. So what I would do is I would keep this blog roll to two to th between two to three links to external resources. It is because this blog roll is used on every single page or post on your website. So it means that you're sending those votes across all those pages and all those posts to external resources. And this really can harm your site. So be careful how you link out. Link out, linking out is important, but don't overdo it. The setting number four is setting up your blog on subdomain. So when you uh, install your website, you have you can choose if you want to set it up on subdomain. So for example, for Shino Digital would be blog.shinosdigital.com or within the folder. So again, for shinosdigital.com, it would be shinosdigital.com slash blog. I would strongly suggest to go for the second option. Although Google said that they treat domain and subdomain as one thing, I wouldn't be so sure about it. There was lots of tests done by others SEOs when they could see that actually setting up the blog within folder of domain is a better option and the post ranks better. So, and the setting number five is lack of sitemap. When you set up the WordPress site first time, you can see that there is no sitemap. What I mean by sitemap? Sitemap is XML sitemap actually, is a file which literally lists all your pages and posts avail available on your domain. 
So if Google is unable to find the post or page on your website, they will definitely find them on your sitemap. To have your sitemap available on WordPress on your WordPress site, just go to plugin section and search for XML sitemap plugin. I will add a link to this plugin below this video, so it should be there. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed those five tips. Please go to shinosdigital.com to download your free copy of SEO ebook and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. You can find the links below this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'm very much looking forward to your comments below this video as well. Take care.